What's good, Commanders fans? Quick video here. I will be doing my Elite Channel member stream tonight with my guys, so stay tuned for that. It should start at 7.30. Uh, my guys, Warpath, Kenny Man DMV, DC Bay. Um, Oscar won't be able to be there, and then we got my guy, Brandon Scott. This is going to be his first one, so it should be a lot of fun. It should be lit. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about the stadium real quick. I'll just read some of John Combs' article and react to it. Um, it's going to be possibly in Woodbridge. So, actually, Sam Fortier came out with some information uh, last night saying that they didn't purchase the land. It's a lease to, it's or a, it's an option to purchase. That's what they did. So, they didn't fully um, buy the land. So, you know, a lot of people are thinking that they already purchased the land that is automatically going to be in Woodbridge. That's not the case just yet. You know, he says, Sam Fortier said, basically, the team seems to have a pay, have paid an unknown Certainly smaller sum to have the rights to the $100 million, 200 acre deal for an unknown window of time. So the report, the original report was $100 million or $200 million that they bought that land in Woodbridge. So that's not the case. They have a lease or an option to purchase uh, agreement as of, as of right now. They still are looking around. It could be PG County. It could be a lot of people are saying they want RFK Stadium in DC. They want to get that area. But most likely it's going to be in Virginia. I'm just, I'm just convinced it's going to be in Virginia. They just, they have land out there. They want to build stuff around it. You know, it's going to be rough for traffic. I'm from PG County, Maryland. I would like to see it in D.C. Out of all the three, out of Maryland, D.C., Virginia, I'd rather see it in D.C. Of course, we are the Washington commander, so you would want it to be in that area. And this, and just that history, you know. But being in Virginia, it's not ideal. Traffic is awful. Um, just Virginia. I don't have a problem with Virginia. You know, the drivers in Virginia are just terrible. Maryland drivers are bad, too, but Virginia is just terrible. The traffic is in Virginia is bad too. Out PG County, Landover was bad too. Landover, there's not much out there to be honest. You know, I'm I'm from PG County, so I know Landover, I know that area. Other than just going to games, there's not much out there to be honest. To be to be honest, you know, if they're trying to, because what do you, what what Dan wants to do? We know Dan is in a lot of trouble and whatnot. You know, so they they announced this news probably to deflect from what's going on with Dan Snyder, the whole voting and council and whatnot like that. Um, but yeah, he wants to have things around it. You watch Hard Knocks when they had the uh, drone fly through the Cowboys um, facility in the area. They had all the nice shops, and retail areas and places to shop. That's that's what they want to do. And that's what it should be like. It should be a nice area like that. So I, I get I get why they want to do it out Woodbridge. You know, I, I, I get why they want to do it in the area. Can they do something like that in D.C.? They possibly could. They possibly could. A lot of people say MGM, the National Harbor. I just don't see that area being... I don't think that's possible seeing that area down in um, Oxon Hill. I don't see that being possible like at all. Um, so that's the news on that. I'll, I'll read a little bit by, about John Kahn, what he says. So according to the source of knowledge, the purchase, the commanders paid a little more than $100 million. So we found out to see that that's not true it's from Sam Fortier. Um, the deal was completed last week, but it's not been filed yet with Prince William County, the site of the land. Um, there's a chance the franchise will buy another 65 to 70 acres at a site that is approximately 23 miles away from Washington, D.C. It will be right off an exit of I-95 Woodbridge, Virginia, It'll be approximately 80 miles from Richmond. So, yeah, that's pretty far down. Um, the commanders like this site because of how it can be developed. According to a source, their plans is to include a 60,000 seat dome stadium. I do like that. I do. like. I don't care about the cold and the elements. We're not the Packers. We're not one of those teams that are known for winning in snow, winning in cold climate. We're just not, we're not known for that. We're not known for winning in any climate, but it would be more appealing and better. I don't like sitting in the snow. I'm not a cold person. I was born in, in the summertime and I don't, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a warm weather guy. I'd rather be in the warm weather rather than being in the cold, freezing. We're not the Bills. We're not, we're not one of those teams like that, that like to be in the cold and it's, it's snowing outside. We don't have any history like that. Maybe back in the 80s, but we haven't had that in like, what, 20 some years? Um, so yeah, I, I'd rather be in, in, in the warm time because now I can be, I don't, I'm not concerned about going to a December game anymore. If it's cold as a brick outside at 30 degrees, at least I know I'm going inside where it can be warm. And I hate freezing and being outside for three and a half hours. These games are three, three and a half hours. Man. It's a long time to be in the cold. It's a long time to be in the cold. Um, and you don't have to worry about the heated benches anymore. That whole bit. Um, the seats, uh, and then 60,000 domes, so it can be used throughout the year. They want to do other stuff, concerts. You know, I know they have other concerts out there and stuff like that at FedEx Field, as well as the team's practice facility and amphitheater that seats between 15,000 to and 20,000 people. Small indoor music arena, high end retail shops, bars and restaurants, and residential living. The roof would be translucent, and the stadium facade 
could change colors. That's 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 pretty cool. That is cool. Burgundy and gold. I saw the picture. That is pretty cool. Translucent roof. That is cool. I've seen that. Now, I remember a couple years ago, they said they wanted to have a moat around the stadium, like a little river. I don't think that's going to happen, but that, that was pretty funny, too. Uh, it would be white during the day and, for example, burgundy at night. That, that is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Washington wants to leave FedEx Field, which was built by former owner Jack K. Cook. Um, before they agree to the, to a site, the team needs to find out how much money the state and Prince William County are willing to commit before finalizing plans to build. Uh, what else? He said the team would like to return to the to DC at RFK Stadium site, their home from 1961 to 1996. But because it's on federal land, numerous governmental hurdles currently make that a long shot. All right. Um, the Commanders will receive 350 million dollars from Virginia. So I mean, if they get that money, man, it's it's, it's gonna be a it's, it's like a 99 percent chance in my opinion it's gonna be a Virginia. So that's just my opinion on it. So um, I like I like I like the look of it. I do like the look of the stadium. It does look pretty cool. And it's, it's about time we get an updated stadium. You know, no more sewer coming out, the uh, railings falling down, different things like that. And like I said, they do need to go to an area where there are more shops and more retail areas around. Um, no disrespect to Orlando, or been out there many many times. Been out that area, and, and, and you know, I think it, it is time to get to an area where it's more. There's like a closed down Circuit City, right there where people parked. Last time I saw, you know, Circuit City's closed down. It's just not much out there, to be honest. It is what it is on that. Um, so Terry McLaurin and the com Commanders. I almost said Commanders because we did sign a, a Panther, a former Panther. I'm gonna get to him real quick. But Nikki Javala said that the Commanders and Terry McLaurin are far away. They're far. They're far apart from making a deal. So are they waiting until June 1st, which is not far away for Landon Collins, for that money to come off the books and then they make a deal? But Terry McLaurin, he's not working out. He's not. He said that. But this is not new news. He's not working out. He said he wasn't going to work on the other other uh, workouts that were like two or three weeks ago. So he's going to set out these OTAs. They had OTAs yesterday. They're going to have OTAs today and OTAs tomorrow. Then they have OTAs again in May, uh, I want to say May 31st to June 2nd. So he, if they don't get a deal done, he's going to keep sitting out. Now, the thing about Terry is his personality is different than a Debo Samuel or A.J. Brown or Tyreek Hill or a lot of the receivers that when they want or, you know, they, they want money, Devontae Adams, when they want money, they will request it or Stephon Diggs. You know, they'll take the they'll take the um, bio off of their Twitter, their Instagram. They'll get upset. They'll subtweet. And it's not just wide receivers. We've seen other positions do this. Look at Kyler Murray. What's going on with him? He's not going to OTAs. You know, he's he's taking stuff down from his profile pic or whatever Instagram or whatnot. You know, I don't see Terry McLaurin as that kind of guy who gets up, you know, who will get upset and do that, you know? So that's that's the that's the good thing that we have going on with Terry. And I know Ron has that slow, methodical, just like D'Angelo Hall said, he has that slow, old-school approach. And I'm not getting worried, but, you know, you got to pay the guy. So I, I guess they're waiting for Atlanta Collins money to come with the books. If they do wait longer than that, and Terry McLaurin's not participating in any OTAs, even, though, even the mandatory ones, he's skipping those, that's when the chatter will get louder. That's when other teams... You see Chiefs fans in the mentions all the time about, oh yeah, let's go get Terry. They're monitoring, they're monitoring the situation as they should. So um that's all I got on that. So I, I think a deal will get done. So I'm not panicking or anything like that. But it is something to keep an eye on. Definitely keep your eyes wide open on that. All right, lastly, so the commander signed Aaron Montero, uh putting him up. He has not played in a regular season. He's played in preseason games. He was not coached by Ron Rivera. He was coached by Matt Rule. Um six foot six, three hundred and fifteen pounds. 25 years old, 25 years old, went to Boston College. So you look at the snaps that he took in preseason per PFF. He took snaps at three positions in the 2021 preseason, 32 snaps at right tackle, 29 snaps at right guard, and five at left tackle. Now, remember the, the guy, Drew Himmelman, the tackle that they claimed from the Broncos, he um, he he got waived with an injury designation. So he or with a physical, failed physical designation. So they had to pick up another guy. This is a depth signing. You know, can John, can John Matsko get the best out of him? Will he have to play? He's going to be behind Sam Cosme, behind Leno, behind Cornelius Lucas, behind Chris Paul. So he's going to be like the third or fourth guy on the death chart. Will he make the roster is the question. Is he a camp body? Um, he was third team all, AC, all AAC, all, all ACC at Boston College as well. So some of this counter report is that he was very rigid in his movement. And this caused him to get beaten off the block on more than one occasion. So... We'll see. I mean, he's more of a practice squad. Like I said, he's never played in a regular season game. Um, and it's just another Panther Commander sign, which I have no problem with. But it is interesting that the whole free agency, they did not sign anybody outside of Carolina. The whole free agency um, that played 
it's just it's it's just the Ron Rivera way. Montero played four seasons in the Boston College, starting 32 consecutive games. He earned third team All ACC as a senior and signed with the Dolphins as an undrafted free agent in, in 2019. So he was waived by Miami. Who then he signed with the Patriots later that season. Then the Patriots cut him six days later. Then he signed with the Panthers and he spent three seasons on the practice squad. So that's the write up on Aaron Montero. So, uh, but like I said, it's, it's time that we get with it. Get a dome, uh, stadium. I like that. Um, so when it's cold, when it's snowing. And they could possibly host a Super Bowl there, too. So you could think think, think about it that way. So um, I like it. I just want to see how the inside looks. You know, they're going to have different things in there. I know they're, gonna, they're probably going to have some gambling in there. That's what they really want. They're going to have some stuff like that, kind of like what uh, the Wizards have in Capital One Arena. I know they're going to love that. Uh, I know Vegas, they got a club in there from what I heard. So they could do something like that in D.C. I don't know if you want to have a club in there, to be honest. This is, you know, the people in D.C., man, and P.G., it, it can get a little real, so I don't know if you want to have a, have a club in there, to be honest. But uh, all right, you guys, Hells of Commanders, peace.